Hey there, DIY enthusiasts! Welcome back to the Smart Home Maker. Today we've got something truly magical for you: an IKEA Windrichtening air quality sensor integration with Home Assistant and ESP Home. If you follow my channel, you might have noticed this little device behind me in some of my last videos. This is an IKEA Windrichtening air quality sensor. It can sense the particulate matter concentration in the room air, is by default not smart connected and only uses the LED lights to indicate whether the particulate matter concentration is okay or not. This sensor costs below 15 bucks. We will use ESP Home to integrate this sensor with Home Assistant. But hold on! We are not just using the particulate matter measurements from the IKEA sensor. We are turning this sensor into a smart powerhouse that can also play with lighting and monitor CO2 levels, for example. The main goal is to ensure perfect fresh air in our house. So, let's jump right into it. I've got my IKEA Windrichtning sensor here and we are going to make it dance to our smart home. Besides the IKEA Windrichtning, we need a D1 Mini, a CCS811 CO2 sensor, a 10K resistor, some wires and soldering equipment, as well as a home assistant installation with ESP Home. Now let's dive into the wiring. First, we connect the Windrichtning PCB with the D1 Mini. We connect 5 volts power and ground, as well as the UART connection for the particulate matter measurements and the fan minus to know whether the fan is on or not. Then we connect the light sensor on the back of the PCB with the analog input of the D1 Mini and we add a 10K resistor to reduce the voltage. The last step is to connect the CCS811 breakout board. Make sure to connect the wake pin with ground, otherwise it won't work. Now we have to prepare the D1 Mini for ESP Home first, but I don't want to explain this because there are already numerous tutorials out there that teach you how to do this. Then we have to write our YAML code for the ESP Home file. First we define the UART, which will be on pin D2 and we have to set a baud rate of 9600. Then we define the I2C bus, which will be on D5 and D6. Then we define the binary sensor for the information whether the fan is running or not on pin number D4. Then we define our particulate matter sensor. We define our CCS811 CO2 sensor. There's one thing about the baseline that I'll tell you later on. We define our light sensor on the analog input A0. And to ensure that the CO2 sensor works properly, we need to give it some temperature and humidity sensor. And here I'm going to import some from Home Assistant. Okay, now we're ready to get our hands dirty and start with the soldering. For opening the device, we need to get a screwdriver and unscrew the four screws on the back of the device. After having opened the device and disconnected the wires going to the sensor and to the fan, we now have our PCB here. If you take a closer look at the top part of the PCB, you can find the five pads that we are now interested in. As shown in the wiring scheme, we will now solder one wire each to the 5 volts ground and rest pad, as well as to the fan minus pad on the bottom part of the PCB. After that, your PCB should now look like this. We will now unscrew the screws that hold the PCB to the front part of the housing in order to access the back part of the PCB. The back part of the PCB contains a light sensor, which is normally used in order order to dim the lights of the IKEA Windrichtning device. But we will make use of this sensor to get the light intensity of the room into Home Assistant in order to use this for further automations. We will carefully solder a wire to the left pad of the light sensor, connect it to a 10K resistor and from there connect it to the D1 Mini. Now we add our CCS811 CO2 and TVOC sensor to the setup. We need to connect the VCC pin to the 3.3 volts power supply of the D1 Mini. We need to connect ground. We need to connect SDA and SCL to D5 and D6 respectively. And also very important, we need to make sure that the wake pin will be pulled to ground. Now that we have connected everything, I want to make sure that everything works before we put it back into the housing. For that, I just connect the PCB to the USB port and also connect the particulate metal sensor to the PCB. We should now already see some values in Home Assistant. Looks very good, so we can now put everything back into the housing. I would propose 
to glue all the components with hot glue into the housing. But please leave enough space for airflow. Our device is ready now, but there's one thing left and that's the calibration of the CO2 sensor. Without calibration it will not work properly. To calibrate it you have to put it into a room which is full of clean fresh air or you just have to put it outside of the window for about 20 to 25 minutes. After the 20 to 25 minutes have passed you can just open the ESP home locks of your device and you can read out the baseline in the locks which you then have to add in the baseline attribute of the ESP home YAML code. But now let's see our device in action. Here you can see how I test the light intensity sensor. It works well. The light intensity will be measured in volts from 0 to 1 volt, 1 volt being the highest light intensity. Of course you could also convert this to lux or just use high, medium, low values. But for me the voltage is enough because I only want to use it for automations. Speaking of automations, let's dive into some example automations that I want to show you. The first automation that I want to show you will make use of our new light intensity sensor. We will create a new automation in Home Assistant. The trigger will be a numeric state. We will then search for our IKEA Wintrichtning light intensity sensor. And then for um, an example, we will just say if the light intensity value is below 0.5 volts for, let's say, 5 seconds, then we want to turn on a certain light automatically. So we will just choose one of the lights. For this I will choose the light in my office. And then we click save. Now let's see our automation in action. If I turn off the light in the office, it will take about 5 seconds until the background light in the office will be automatically turned on. Isn't that great? But wait, I have a second automation for you. In this automation we also have a numeric state as a trigger. As the entity, we in this time we choose our IKEA Wintrichtning air quality sensor CO2 equivalence. And we say, for example, if that value is above 1000, but this is just an exemplary value, then I want to send a push notification. So, how to send a push notification? Choose notifications and then select all devices. In this case, for me, I want to send a notification with the message, the air quality in the office is really bad, please open the window to let in some fresh air. Okay, so let's save this and then try it out. And we can see that in case there will be some bad air, we will receive a notification. Okay, so that's it. I hope you really loved this video. If you do so, then please subscribe to my channel and also watch my other videos. Thank you. See you next time.